Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, I am going to let you know how I actually was able to become legal. <laughs> So as some of you guys may know, my husband is French along with my children. I unfortunately am not because I have just been delaying taking my French national exam. I'm hoping this is my goal to take it by the next year. So that is on my to-do list, but it does involve a pretty lengthy interview, written and reading exams. So I've just been kind of delaying it because I need to brush up on my French. It does require a higher level of proficiency than obtaining a Portuguese citizenship. So I just wanted to make sure that I study well in advance for it. Anyway, so I am not a French national like my family is. So I needed to apply for an Article 15 visa to stay in Portugal. So for those that aren't familiar with the Article 15 visa, it is pretty much a family reunification visa for those that are married to an EU citizen. So when you are applying for an Article 15 visa, in my situation, you need to understand the difference between an Article 15 visa and a family reunification visa because they're completely different. So an Article 15, like I mentioned, are set aside for family members that are married to someone that is a citizen in the EU Schengen area. So for instance, France, um, Sweden, or, there's a whole bunch, so I'm not gonna list it all. And family reunification visas are mainly for people who have obtained like, let's say a D7 or live in Portugal full time. So they're on a residency permit and want to bring their family over, such as their partner or their children, whether it's their biological children or adopted children to come live in Portugal. So when you do come here, just know that those two are completely separate. So if you're someone that's like in my situation, you want to apply for the Article 15. Do not mention family reunification because they will get those two confused and it's a completely different process with completely different documentations that are needed and different requirements. So just make sure that you mention Article 15 because they know what Article 15 is and then you don't want to get confused later on. So our process was pretty lengthy. We arrived here back in June and it is now January and I just became a legal resident as of December. So here is my process. So first, when we arrived here, my husband contacted the camera. So he wanted to kind of know what to do to make it formal for his residency to change to Portugal versus back in the States or France. Now, they notified us that one, we had to get a letter from the Junta. The Junta is pretty much your local council, I guess, um, where you go there and you apply for your residency certificate. This can be done within your 90 day tourist visa, let's just say. So you go there, you obtain that, and you just let them know that you're changing your residency over to Portugal because you plan on living here. And it's actually a pretty simple process. You go there, you don't need an appointment, you have to show them your passport, and you need um, a letter, like an affidavit, that you are a self-employed or that you are a professional worker and that you have sufficient funds for you and your family and you have health care from your previous country or your country of origin. So you need that. And also there is a 15 euro cost to it. So typically they provide that to you same day. So you arrive, you hand over this paperwork and they give you your registration certificate the same day. However, in our situation, it was not the same day and my husband had to go back, I believe a week later, I wanna say about a week or two weeks later, just because the manager on duty had to review all the documents and then sign off on it. So you need that first before you can, before your camera appointment. So the camera appointment actually doesn't happen until you fulfilled your 90 day visa in the country. And then after that, you have 30 days to pretty much change over your residency. So his appointment wasn't actually until October. We arrived in June and it wasn't until October when we, when he had his appointment for him and our kids too. So when we went to the camera, we had to supply them with that paperwork from the Junta along with other documents such as their passports, their NIFs. I, I think, oh, we needed a lease with the names on it. Uh, 
and I believe that was really it. I'm trying to recall if there was anything else. I want to say we probably had to provide some sort of financial statement too to show that we had funds. And then I believe he had to get a letter from his employer that he is employed. But other than that, it wasn't a really hard process and the fees were really nominal. I want to say for the three kids, I don't recall, but it wasn't a lot. I want to say it was 35 euros per child or per applicant, but I'll link it below. I, I can't recall the exact amount, but it wasn't a lot. And then after that, they supplied us with the residency certificate um, on like a thick card stock. Um, so they gave us the original and they gave us a couple copies as well. And they just told us, make sure when you hand this over, because some places might ask for the original to get the original back, because it is a process that if we were to lose the original, it, it's a pretty lengthy process. We have to go back to the camera, well, one, we have to make an appointment and then we have to go back and then apply for it to get another original as well. So it is a pretty lengthy process to get that again, if you were to lose it. So she just made sure to let you guys know, do not lose the original. Now, prior to COVID, I don't know if you needed to make an appointment with a camera, but during COVID times, you need to make an appointment and apparently it's not as easy to come by. So just make sure you call when, within that 90 day tourist visa time to make an appointment because they are backed up due to COVID. Now for me, it was such an ordeal. When we first arrived to Portugal, even before we first arrived to Portugal, all the articles that we read, it just seemed like it was a super easy process. You just kind of go in, go out, make an appointment with staff. It should be a rather quick process just because my husband is, you know, French. So it, we didn't have to wait or we thought for an appointment with SAF. Well, it was much harder to obtain a SAF appointment than I had ever initially thought. When I first called SAF, we were on hold, I wanna say for at least an hour before we were able to uh, get someone on the phone. And then because we don't speak Portuguese, we had to then ask if they spoke Portuguese, which then most of the time they didn't. So they had to then find the person that spoke English, then transfer you to them. Only to find out that there were no available appointments. Now, back in April, I believe, April of 2021, Seth was changing hands. So they were converting to, I believe they called it SEA, where the GNR was about to take over Seth. So there, were, it was a huge transition period and I believe they're still transitioning now. So we had to call every day to try to get an appointment. And that was Seth telling us this. So the agent on Seth was like, just check back every day or every Monday, call when you can. Um, to see if there are any available appointments because they weren't able to tell us if there were going to be available appointments. They just kind of open up slots on a daily basis or a weekly basis. And then you're just in luck if you're able to find one. So we would call back daily only to either have the phone line drop, have an agent tell us that there was no appointments or just have a constant busy line. So it was such an ordeal for months to come by and I was not able to obtain a SEF appointment until my husband received his residency certificate, which has like an, a number associated with it. So I would call daily, I would call weekly. At a point, I was thinking about applying for the D7 because it was just crazy that people who apply for D7s were able to get a SEF appointment within a few weeks after applying and here I was try and still call <laughs> and get an appointment. I called the Seth and asked them, like, is it just easier applying for the D7? And they had mentioned that even for D7s, it was hard for them to obtain a Seth appointment. Though I don't know if that's true or not, but they were pretty much in line too, just like we were. Um, just because the whole ordeal with COVID and the transition, the appointments were just really few and far to come by. So, I then just, I just had to hire a third party to help me with the phone calls because again, I figured, well, with my lack of Portuguese, I need someone that's fluent in Portuguese to maybe get another person that had access to appointments, whereas maybe the English speaker one didn't have as much access to appointments. I just wanted to kind of, you know, do what I can to get an appointment. So I hired someone to call in regularly and she was calling in for other people too. And it was a very nominal fee. So I felt like it was best bang for my money. You know, I would call in, she would call in and all that. 
So this was back in October and she was calling in, I was calling in November. And then finally it was like the beginning of December where she emailed me and was like, you need to log in because I forgot to mention that my husband's, when he was able to receive his residency paperwork, he was able to log in through staff to make appointments. And I was able to make an appointment for myself on staff, but I would log in daily and the same situation with the phone calls, there were no appointments to be found. So she emailed me and said, log in right away. There are appointments available. And I'm like, oh, what? So I logged in. I found an appointment for the following week. And this was like mid, early mid-December. So I was able to make an appointment the following week, right before the holidays. And oh my gosh, I was like, it was like Christmas had come early because you have no idea. I was in this weird, weird transition period where I already went past my 90 day tourist visa. So I couldn't leave the country. I couldn't even go back to the States because I had already, because if you were to go back to the States, you have to then wait another, you know, I believe another 60, 90 days. I, I want to say 90 days before you can re-enter the Schengen area. So I couldn't go back to the States. I couldn't really go to any other EU countries, even though people mentioned that you could because you're in the Schengen area and they weren't going to check passports. But I didn't really want to risk it because I didn't want to show that I overstayed my visa and then have issues coming back into the country. So I really didn't want to risk anything. So that was already our ordeal. So to get an appointment, I'm like, oh my God, thank God, because I want to be able to go back to the States and I want to be able to travel and I want to be able to leave Portugal if I wanted to, you know? So we were able to get an appointment at the CEF in Santorum and we came with all of our documentation. So like our my passports or our passports because I needed his passports, my criminal background check, even though they never asked for it and it wasn't on the list of things that you needed. However, the third party person told me that sometimes they ask for it and it's best to have it. So I did have that. I had our financial statements, we had our lease, we had his residency paperwork, a utility bill, bank account statement. So we just had all the documents that we needed for this appointment. So we got called back pretty quickly because I had an appointment and she reviewed the documents and thankfully she did speak English. So it wasn't hard to fumble through Portuguese. And then it was a rather quick process. I want to say I was in and out within an hour. They took my photo, fingerprints, signature, and she gave me my temporary residency paperwork, which is really odd because the expiration date on that was for March 31st, 2021. And so I asked her, I'm like, well, it's December, 2021. This is already not valid anymore. It's already expired. Is this going to be an issue? And so she had said, don't worry, it's not an issue. It's just temporary. Um, you'll get your actual card and it'll come in the mail within like a month or two. So then I asked her, can I travel with this paperwork? And she had mentioned, you can go back to the States, but you really can't travel anywhere else because this is just like a formality to give you this paperwork, but it's actually not really legal per se. Well, it's legal, but it, it's not, nowhere else, no other country will see it as legal, except for Portugal. So just to be on the safe side, not to travel anywhere but the United States and to stay within Portugal. So I thought, okay, a month or two I can wait because we're hoping to go back to the States soon. But at least I have fulfilled everything. And once I get actual, my actual residency card, it's valid for 10 years. And then I'll be able to then renew it. Or I believe I can apply for my citizenship after two or three years anyway. I have to double check. But you can apply for your citizenship within those 10 years. So... Yeah, so now I am officially legal. It was such an ordeal and longer than I had anticipated. But if you are looking for an Article 15 visa, just be persistent. And I would honestly just recommend hiring a third party if you have the funds for it, because it really did save me so much time. Well, irony is it took a long time but it did save me a long time because if she had not called me or emailed me 
I would probably still be calling and I would not have known about those dates at all. So and you might be asking what the fees I paid. And I did pay, I want to say I paid 12 euros for her. However, she did up her prices now just because it is a pain. <laughs> it is a lot more work than just giving me a simple phone call and getting an appointment. But I do know that some other places charge as low as 20 euros or 30 euros. And I believe for me, it was well worth it. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you do hit the subscribe button and, and like this video, I really appreciate it. And I hope to have more videos for you guys soon. Thanks. See you next time. Ciao.